Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden. And today we're going to be working in this portion of the front garden. I'm going to be cutting back all the daffodils, adding some beautiful warm annual color, and adding a beautiful perennial in this terracotta pot beside me. All right, so I'm literally back here pulling weeds. It's a never ending battle, right? <laughs> and when I see them, I can't help but pull them. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing in this area is the plants that I'm wanting for further back here, I have not found them yet. I had a suggestion of adding in a orange rocket uh, barberry here, like right here in the center, and it would really set off the limelight hydrangea. So I love that idea. I have not found the barberry that I want yet. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I cut back the daffodils. The daffodils, I let them bloom, and once they start turning brown on the ends of the leaves, it's time for me to cut them back. I don't cut them all the way back to the ground. I cut them about six inches above the ground. So let's knock that out. So there's a lot of theories about cutting daff daffodil leaves back. Um, you want to leave the leaves up as long as possible because basically after it's bloomed, because basically it is taking the energy out of the green leaves and putting it into the bulb. The same reason you want to pull the blooms off once they finish blooming. You don't want that bloom head to just sit on these forever and ever um, because it is making seeds and it takes energy away from the ball, uh, from the bulb. So a lot of people will braid their daffodils. They'll take them like this, they'll divide it, and then they'll just braid them like this. And then they'll just kind of leave it like that on the ground. Um, I feel like it takes too much time. So what I do is I just come in here and I leave about four inches at the top of my daffodils, or excuse me, at the base of my daffodils. And the reason I go with four inches is because it is tall enough for it to still get utilized um, its green or its leaves to pull in inner to the bulbs, but it's also short enough that it can allow me, I can put annuals around this and disguise these so that they don't stand out as much. Um, you could certainly leave these until they um, have browned all the way out and lots of people do. I just don't find them visually appealing at that point. And I've had these bulbs in for a while. And they've done really, really good and they've naturalized and multiplied each year. So I feel like my method is okay. Um, perhaps it's not the best method, but it's it's my method and it's what, wor what works well in my garden. So if you have a particular method for daffodils when you cut them back, go ahead and drop that information in a comment below. Okay, y'all, the humidity is insane. I'm literally dripping. Okay, so what I've got here is a flat of annual salvias. These are from Homegrown in Farmersville. I chose a mixed flat that has some warm colors and some cooler colors because that's what I'm trying to do a lot in my yard this year is, or my garden this year is bring more warm tones. So what I wanna do is basically disperse these all through this area of daffodils. I've got, I believe, 18 in here. So I'm gonna disperse them all out. So the idea is that that's the fill up and grow in they'll cover these shorter leaves salvias also do really really good in my hot weather and they'll really put up with he the humidity the first thing i'm going to do is treat the whole space with plant tone and i'm just going to instead of sprinkling in each individual hole i'm just going to work it through the whole space it'll be good for the bulbs too i do have some sedum over here i don't want to I really don't want to add any fertilizer to the sedum. Also, I have some of my fun rocks back here. Move some of these forward. Okay, let's go ahead and get planting. Got 
that one. So pretty. Okay, well those are gorgeous. <laughs> Look at the bicolored ones. Bicolor, there's kind of like a kind of mauvey red, a bright red, more bicolor, dark plum, peach, kind of a lighter purple. So pretty. And it kind of combines the warm colors and the cool colors together. Okay, so next what we're going to do, we're going to talk about this planter. I'm going to move it over into place, and then I'll show you all what's going in it. Okay, check out this hibiscus. I did not think it was a hibiscus when I first saw it. Um, it has variegated leaves, ivory, plum, green, pinks, reds, absolutely beautiful. This variety is called Salsa Dancer Hibiscus. And it's known for vibrant red single flowers, bloom in summer, brilliantly variegated foliage is randomly splashed in shades of green, white, burgundy, red, and pink, grows three to six feet tall and wide, excellent in containers and as a colorful specimen. It needs full sun and it's hardy to zone nine. Um, so it does die back 20 to 30 degrees. So if uh, it can only handle 20 to 30 degrees, um, uh, it can only get that cold. So sorry, I've got drips of sweat on my glasses. So if I do want to overwinter this, I will have to bring this in, which is why I'm also putting it in a container. So the idea being that I've got this container and the idea being that it would be in this container just like that. So I'm going to bring the container over a little bit so you guys can see it. It's just one of those beautiful vintage containers that I got. There is a hole on the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and fill it with fresh soil, plant tone, and we're going to plant this up. How's it going? Amazon delivery guy just stopped by. And I always try talking to him. I think he thinks I'm insane. But I'm out here all the time. He just smiles. <laughs> okay. I think we're good. Let me get all this other stuff out of the way and then let's place this. Okay. So let's slide this in place. Now I know it's a little hidden, but that is basically the goal um, when I'm working with these pots in the garden. And I probably need to put a little something underneath it to help it drain. Okay, well, real quick. So you know I was talking about the Barbary and it's more of like a red orange color. But just to give you an idea, when you put something like this in front of the limelight hydrangeas, look how much everything pops. So that was the idea behind the person, I think it was Pat, who recommended that I do this. And you can see how vibrant this area gets. Now, I don't want to do that with this particular one, but I do want to do it with the Barbary, which I would be a permanent shrub and I think that would look really nice. Okay, let's water all this in. Okay, let's look at it from this side. You can see the salsa dancer hibiscus right there and it will eventually have large bright red flowers. You can see the salvia planted here bridging the gap for cool tones and warm tones together. And then 
The next step will be to add a Barbary of some type here. And then right behind the Salvia, I would like to do heated up, heated up Gallardia in yellow. I think it would be really, really pretty. I don't have a lot of yellow yet. However, this area is going to get a lot of yellow. I, we are almost done. As soon as I get past this garden tour, all this is coming up over here. I'll probably keep the Desi Miller. I'm going to intertwine with some Sun Credible uh, sunflowers and potentially some more hibiscus, I think. I'm not sure yet. But the plan for that, the Barbary and the Heated Up Gallardia, will finish off this space beautifully. And one more thing I'm going to do, because it's just about to rain, I think I'm going to go ahead and hook up drip to these. I haven't done it. I'm going to do that off camera as I've showed you all how to hook up multiple times. And yeah, everything's looking nice. All right, you all, I hope you enjoyed today's video, adding these touches. A perennial kind of, if I decide to overwinter it right here, and then the salvia. I'm really excited. I'm proud of myself for stepping out of my comfort zone and adding more warm tones. I love warm tones. I just forget about them. Um, so I'm really excited. How much beautiful is this Dusty Miller? So pretty. Um, okay, so as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up. And make sure you check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks y'all. Okay, look at the relationship between this kind of peachy salvia. And then if we pan this way, look at the red lark delphinium over there. Those are a really nice tie into one another. I like it. I like that peachy color. <laughs>